your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Enjoy it. Yes. Enjoy it. Stevens Brody Stevens in the house. I'm so happy you're here, man. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I've been a big fan of yours, and I will say this. I think I am... Um, there's there's a way to there's I'm not a guy that took Brody Stevens immediately and drank it all in. I pushed back at first. Do you get that? Yeah, I I get that a lot. Really? I've heard a lot of people say that they don't they don't get it at first. I did not get it at all. I don't get it at first. How do you not get your own life? And say- I don't. I backed into this. How so? Yeah, you know, I played baseball. I I wanted to be a, a baseball player. You played with Josh Gibson. And uh, uh, <laughs> double duty. You struck out double duty uh, with the Birmingham Black Barons, right? That's a long time ago. I played... Hey, we're doing a podcast, all right? Enough with the neighborhood stuff. Sorry, Brody. It's I got neighbors, neighbors that crazy. feel like they can sit in their yard and talk and have a nice time when we're trying to make a, an honest dollar here. Which Yeah, we're trying to create art. And promote. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. HBO Digital Go. You got it. Engage your core. Engaging the core. Hiking Runyon Canyon. Um, you don't get it either? No, I mean, I, I never thought I was like a funny guy. I still f- feel as though I'm not funny. I mean, I know I'm funny because people tell me I'm funny, and I've done enough to to justify me saying that I'm funny, but I don't have that supreme confidence. And uh, Well, I don't think any comic does. I think I'm the only one. Which makes people think I'm a dick, just because I walk in super confident and I'm ready to go. I'm like a number three hitter. That's great. I'm, yeah, but That's not the best when you're hitter hanging around people that hate themselves. They just think you're an asshole. But I wouldn't think that it was. I wouldn't think that somebody who's confident is a is a jerk necessarily. You met me 2.0. You met me, you know, uh, the right marriage. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like you met me when I wasn't wanting to commit murder and die. You had that uh, going on earlier? Yeah, when, when you've made that long of a commitment to someone and you know, you know, there's, I'm a big Springsteen fan. A lot of the listeners are obvious. Well, really? He's a new guy. Keep your, head, keep your eye out for this guy, Springsteen. Springsteen? Yeah. I've heard of him. Jewish kid from Jersey. Half Jewish, half Italian. Half Jewish. Asbury Park. Uh, Freehold, my friend. Oh, it's Freehold? Yeah, that's just the album was uh, Greetings from Asbury Park. But here's the thing. In Tunnel, uh, in Brilliant Disguise, Mm -hmm. the lyric is, God have mercy on the man who doubts what he's sure of. And I heard that one day driving back to that fucking house on that hill that I hated and just with a knot in my stomach. And I went, oh, I'm sure this isn't working. God have mercy on me. Mm Mm-hmm. So and he did. So I met my soulmate and married the actual first person I was ever in love with this time. Right. So uh, that's just a roundabout way. I didn't mean for it to be about me, but you. I was realizing, oh yeah, Brody met me when I was happy and free swinging and free happy me. Yeah. I met you doing. I believe you're doing warm up for Best Damn Sports Show. Yeah. And you would say Brody Stevens eight one eight. I live in the San Fernando Valley, and you would sort of just do like. Almost like a, a ticker tape, come, like news coming in, like you had an IFB and you were just repeating what you were being told, like just uh, like uh, ma- not minutia, but, but just like actual facts. And like Angie, one of the engineers goes, he saw you at a show and you said, where are you from? And a person goes, Tarzana. You went, Tarzana, home of the Snoopy Bridge, Tarzana, California. And you yes, it is. The- On Wilbur, went there. Tarzana <laughs> exactly. Elementary. Like, that is hysterical, but the first time I heard it, I was one of the people that pushed back, like, I don't even know what the hell's going on, like, because it wasn't B, 
bit. Like what you're doing is entirely unique. And for that, you should be saluted and commended and blown vociferously. <laughs> if you meet Brody Stevens, just gobble his dick. But it's hard Guys. to... It's funny you say the, the dick and they go, but it's hard. It's, it's hard to you know, do that for people who don't know me. Like to go out on the road, for example, if they said, Brody, you're going to do... You're going to headline in Kansas City or something, do a weekend. It's like, that is not where I'm at right now. I'd like to be there. I feel like I'm on my way to getting there. This is a place of positivity, this mm-hmm. podcast. I, I would like to take pride, and I, I think we've, we've flushed out over 100 episodes that it's the message is always extraordinarily. We're relentlessly optimistic and positive mm-hmm. on this side of the podcast world. But And what you're doing is something that takes longer, and you're friends with Zach, and Zach's a prime example, where the first thousand times he probably went out, people went, I don't even know what this is. Right. And you're a guy that I would say, and these are just numbers I'm pulling out of my ass, 20% of the room is going, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. You know? Yeah. But over like 20 years, that 20% is all going to fill a theater and that's your like think of Richard Lewis and Gilbert Godfrey and I think you're actually funnier than those guys. Oh, thank you. But those are guys when you watch them a lot of people go what is happening? This is absurd. Mm-hmm. This isn't I don't understand what's even, you know, I I think you're the type of comic. It's not the rhythm like Colin Quinn's a guy too. Like it's not the rhythm that America's ears are used to, like, hey, you know, flying's crazy, and what's with this? And that's wacky punchline. You have your own rhythm. You're like, um, you know, like Thelonious Monk. You're Coltrane. You like Greg Proops is like that too when he does his podcast. You're your own thing, and you are to be saluted. And this is this is your wake up call, my friend. Oh well, thank you, Jay. Keep going and doing this, and don't change a damn thing. It, with, I mean, you're relentless, right? Uh, I get up on stage, you know, uh, I, I, I've not quit. I get up on stage three, four nights a week, sometimes more. Com- comedy store, Laugh Factory, and you improv. you take the very late spots at the comedy store. Not I get, because you want to. I mean, I get them, yeah. I mean, And a lot of comics would say, you know what, I'm better than that. Fuck this place. I'm not going on at one in the morning. But you go up and you make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I'm not getting the one in the morning spots anymore. I'm getting more like, you know, I get, I get my 11 o'clock spot. I get 11, 30, 12. 12. you know. But I do get the later spots. And sometimes that's more fun for me. This, but I can be looser. And like I did the main room on Saturday night. It was a 12 o'clock spot. But there was about 20 people in there, 25 people. My goal at that point is like to keep them there. They've already seen comedy for two, two and a half hours. So when I go up there, I'm just trying to keep them. And, you know, do my stuff also. But if I can keep them, and I did an hour. I did an hour and seven minutes. So I kept them to like almost two in the morning or, you know, close to that. But I think those people, when it's done, you're the part of the show that they felt like they were a part of. Yeah, I interact they, with them. You know, yeah. They, it's not like I saw this guy, I saw that guy, and then Brody Stevens came out and we were all in the fish tank together. Yeah. And that's super rare and great. And But where, when you go from pitching at ASU, right? I was a pitcher, yeah. And you ran it up there. I threw pretty hard. I had a good fastball. I struck out a lot of guys. 92? 90, well, 91 officially, but I'm sure I got clocked at 92 a couple times. At but home. I always say at, 91. At, at home? At, no, I say 91. That's that's on the jugs gun. Yeah. So that's uh, pretty... I had a good arm. I had a good power arm. And you're a righty. I was right-handed. Your personality would make one think that you were a lefty. Lefties are a little wacky. Yeah, a little, a little uh, flaky, wacky. And but you're just a righty. And how do you go from pitching at Arizona State? Did you letter? Is that what it's called in college? Yeah, I lettered. So I was there for five years. I, I had surgery in '91, my uh, my junior year. I kind of missed that. But then I came back from uh, I redshirted and came back for a couple more years. I didn't, and I tried to make it back. And my, by the by, my fifth year, um, they decided to keep me on as a coach. And paid for all my school. That's awesome. So when I got hurt, they basically said, look, and I was on scholarship at that point. I earned a scholarship. I was like a recruited walk-on at first, and then by my second year, I earned a scholarship. And 
So when I hurt my arm, it was basically, look, we'll pay for your surgery, but we'll, we can take your scholarship away. Or um, we can pay for the rest of your school, but you can't play baseball anymore. It was like I had to weigh it out. So I got surgery. They paid for my surgery, and then I had to pay for my school the next year. And then when I got realized I couldn't go on anymore, my elbow was just too chronic, had bad mechanics and all that stuff. They decided to keep me around, and they paid for my school like the last year. Were you, and like I said, your stand-up isn't the rhythm of stand-up. You know what I mean by that, mm -hmm. right? Do you? Yeah. Okay. The, that hackneyed, like, fucking rhythm that I mean, I wish I could do that. I wish I could be no, that No, that'd be, the, that'd be a crime against your talent. Okay. In my opinion. And everybody that loves you, loves you because it's the way you're doing it. Okay. So those uh, sitcom-y type, like I'm a hack from way back. I'm, I'm set up, knock them down, set up, knock them down. So I, I know what it's like when a guy like me is in a workplace and just clowning around and make people laugh. But you seem like you're just left of, or way left of center. How... Were you, like, real funny with your teammates? Yeah, I mean, I got along with all the pitchers. Guys thought I was funny. I wasn't the funniest guy on the team. Like, there's definitely, like, some funnier guys, I felt, like, just saying funny stuff. But I was uh, peculiar, I guess, and um, I had good relationships with the other pitchers that we hung out with, and they would mimic me, kind of, like, the enjoy it stuff and how I would uh, be positive and... So I knew I had something. Like, smarter guys got me. Not everybody got me. But you knew there was something about... What I'm saying is, did you... I guess the hack question would be, when did you know you wanted to be a comic? But I was trying to go about it in a circuitous way, but then I realized I can't because I'm not a very good interviewer. That's why we have yeah, conversations instead. How, how did you know to apply that somewhere else? Well, I took an acting class. My last year or two at ASU, my last year I had a lot of uh, electives. So I, I said, let me, uh, let me try some acting. Because I would go up into the study hall, and I remember a couple of the football guys would say, hey, Brody, you're funny. I'd make, I'd make people laugh, like, just by being myself. I'd make the, uh, you know, the women's basketball team laugh or the volleyball team. And so I knew I had something. I didn't, I, and um. How, why are you alone with the women's basketball team making them laugh? That seems like an odd audience. No, but I mean, when you're no, but when you're doing hi, ladies. Sorry to interrupt practice. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Yes, positive push. No, you, at ASU, like the study halls, you'd be all together. You know, you have oh, a, you'd yeah. have the computer lab and everybody. This is back in the late eighties or early nineties. The 90s. Atari twenty six hundred computer. Yeah, well, they had Macintoshes just coming out, the floppy disk and all that stuff. But I would utilize the tutors, and then you would you'd see the you know the basketball players, the gotcha. the swimming team, and all that stuff. And a few people thought I was funny, and um, other than the baseball guys as well. And I felt like one guy said, hey, Brody, you should do comedy. You should do stand-up comedy. I never, ever, like, considered doing stand-up comedy. I wouldn't have minded being an actor. Like, that would be kind of cool, like, to be a famous actor. Wow, that would be cool. But Hangover 2. In it, yes. Hangover 1, in it as well. <laughs> but I didn't, um, <laughs> I didn't, um, it wasn't like I wanted to be a stand-up necessarily. People said I was funny. So when I had these extra classes, I took an acting class at ASU, and I went in there, and it was just supportive. You know, when you play baseball, college baseball, you went to Seton Hall, right? Did you uh, go to Seton Hall? I almost went to Rutgers. Oh, Rutgers. And they realized, he doesn't have grades. Oh, he got to have grades. <laughs> He's not very smart. He can't come here. Well, that, they... Um, um, but yes, Big East. Big East. Good school. Good conference. Whoever's I, in it now. So I, I, I can't nobody keep track knows. of these no, It's, it's not a good conference. But anyway... So you so I took comedy. an acting yeah. class, and it was just like opened my eyes. There was like cute girls in there. Everybody was supportive, and it was like baseball players. You know, they like to rip and attack, and you know that's how it is. You know, and so it was like for me to be in that supportive atmosphere. Like, wow, this is cool. Let me take another acting class. So I took another acting class, and it was all right. But at that point, I was getting I was getting laughs just being myself, even though I was trying to do something serious or do a you know something. Uh, Dr dramatic and I, I felt like you know what maybe I should try this comedy angle but is that confusing to you that you're getting laughs just being yourself when you're not trying to be funny and like you're trying to be serious and try it's kind of like the the 
the plight of the comic hitting on the girl. The girl keeps going, you're so funny. And you're like, no, I'm serious. Do you want to come home with me? Like, ha, ha, ha you're so funny. Like that mu- It seems to me like that would be a little bit of a mind bender that you're doing like a serious scene and people are laughing. Did that right. bother you at all? No, it didn't bother me. It just it opened my eyes to say, you know what? I'm I guess I am 